What is the vow that you have taken? To refrain from the uh, worldly joys of life. That is a monkish way of life. Hmm? There are two ways of life. The householder, who takes upon himself the responsibility of society and activity, and someone who goes into the monastery or into the uh, forest and caves and meditates there. Have you renounced the world? I did renounce the world. And uh, the thing is, for the last many hundreds of years, the idea has been cherished by society in all parts of the world that if one wants to lead a spiritual life, one has to renounce the world. And uh, I came out of this uh, same world. That what I had the idea that I must renounce the world in order to be really a spiritual man, a yogi. But what I found on is that this spiritual life is not dependent on the renunciation of the world. It only, it's only dependent on morning and evening practice of meditation which can take our mind to the inner being and uh, open to us the uh, great reservoir of intelligence and energy and bliss consciousness. Bliss consciousness. Transcendental meditation is a process of experiencing consciously the subtle state of thinking and uh, getting to the source of thinking. And the source of thinking is a reservoir of energy and intelligence. Thought flows due to energy and it takes a direction due to intelligence. So the reservoir of thought, currents, is the reservoir of energy and intelligence. When the mind goes deep within the thinking process... As in sleep, you mean? Not in sleep. In sleep the mind is tired. Thinking mind becomes tired and it ceases to think, but it remains on the same level. Here in transcendental meditation, the mind becomes sharper and sharper as it experiences the finer state of thought. And by the time it explores the source of thought, it gains bliss consciousness. What is the word transcendental got to do with it? Transcendental means the mind goes from one experience to the other experience of thinking. It transcends the experience of thought on one level, gets to the other finer state of thought, and thereby it, it is transcending the field of thought. That's why we call it transcendental meditation. Well now, suppose I came to you and I said, please tell me how to meditate transcendentally. What advice would you give me? I'll suggest to you one syllable. A one syllable? A syllable. What do you mean? By syllable I mean some sound. Like rose, for example? No. no. Room? No, no. Some sound uh, which will not have any meaning. Its value will be just the sound. Well, well, could you because, give, me, because, give, give me an example of such a sound? No, because, because the thing is uh, that uh, when we say rose, then the mind goes on the rose and the mind floats on the horizontal level. This is what we call thinking. Contemplating on something is the horizontal activity of the mind. Well, now, can you give me an example of this sort of syllable? Example we don't give because each, each personality has his own suitable syllable. Each man is selected the syllable, so and I have, I have trained teachers who are teaching this uh, transcendental meditation. So you keep it secret? Uh, it's a secret. Everyone is told to, to keep that sound on which uh, he experiences the subtler state of the sound, to keep it in himself. Supposing I came to you and I said, why should I meditate transcendentally? What answer would you offer me? Uh, for the expansion of the mind. Well, the mind should expand. In psychology, we, we know that man uses only a small portion of his mind. So the only benefit would be to myself? Oh, of course. Nobody else? And then uh, it speaks on the social behavior. When one has an expanded state of consciousness, one is happier and he thinks clearly, then whatever he does and how he behaves is on a much improved level. How can you be sure of this, that it would make a better person of me? Because if a man is using his small portion of mind, he must be small in his understanding, in his thinking, in his feeling, in his behavior. And if he uses a bigger portion of the mind, he must be a man of much clearer thinking, more powerful thought force, much more refined and more uh, accomplishing in the field of action. But it doesn't... Good, sweet behavior in love and harmony. It doesn't follow that he would be a better person. He might be a worse person because he might use a greater portion of his mind 
to do the harmful things that the small portion of his mind has already led him to do. But the thing is that in, uh, that source of thought, whereas it is the source of energy and intelligence, it is bliss consciousness. What do you mean by bliss, bliss consciousness? consciousness uh, it creates a very happy, jolly mood. The sort of happy, jolly mood that people claim to get from a bottle of whiskey. And then the after effects of whiskey are disastrous. But the after effects of meditation are much more encouraging because one comes out with a happy mood and then he enjoys the world better and behaves much better. Oh, but why His actions are more profound. Why should he behave much better? I mean, are you teaching him the difference between right and wrong? No, we don't teach him difference between right and wrong. We improve his level of consciousness and then he sees what right is and what wrong should be and then he behaves better within himself. There's nothing to do with God at all, is it? I think the whole creation and everything has to do with God. But the belief in God has nothing to do with transcendental meditation. But, you, but you... we can't say nothing has to do with God because everything has to do with the Creator. And it is the Creator which we say God. Is transcendental meditation just another way of talking about prayer? I wouldn't say. If we want to connect prayer with transcendental meditation, we would say this practice will make a man for effective prayers. Because of the increased capacity of the mind, every thought of his will be more powerful and then his prayers will naturally be more powerful. So this is not a method of prayer, but if one wants to pray after meditation, he will pray better. If you want to write an essay after meditation, fine, he'll write very creative essays. Everything that a person does will be done better after meditation. Will be done better and more profoundly. So as if a man is very cruel, he'll be even more cruel after meditation. Now, cruelty is the expression of stress and strain. Now, stress and strain just dissolve when one gets to bliss consciousness. All criminal tendencies and societal tendencies and wrong habits and taking pleasure in troubling others, these are all the expressions of the uh, stressed mind. The stress appears as condemnation and uh, damaging to others. In gaining bliss consciousness through transcendental meditation, one becomes more contented at the same time, clear in thinking and more powerful thought. And therefore, there is no chance of increasing the bad habits in a man, only that he ceases to be bad. All his actions are much more right and righteous, and at the same time, more uh, reasonable for himself and for others. All tenderness of love increases. It's got nothing to do with society as a whole. It is, in a literal sense, a totally selfish practice, isn't it? Absolutely. It is totally selfish and makes a man a better man. When you say that it is totally selfish, what precisely do you mean? Then I, I say that every tree has to be very selfish in sucking the water and maintaining its greenness if the whole garden is to be made green. Yes, but of course we are not trees. We are living, we are living human beings and we have responsibilities, haven't we, one to another? Of course, yes. We cannot think of a better society without a better man. And to be a better man, a man has to be integrated his outer life has to be integrated with the inner light of being. Yes, but you see, you keep on talking about this bliss consciousness. Yes. As if somehow or other, a person by attaining this no longer experiences suffering. Very right. A man should not suffer, and why should he? Well, I'll it's tell you one reason why it might be said that he should suffer. Because if we do not suffer, if we do not experience with others the suffering which they have, we lose our impetus to care. No, 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 no. Suffering is damaging to life and damaging to progress. How is it possible to care for people unless you can experience with them what they are suffering? Through increased capacity of loving more. And it is bliss consciousness that makes a man uh, rise to universal love. How is it possible to love without suffering? Oh, no. We love in, in enjoyment. But the moment and you love, you must suffer. Oh, no. If Surely, it, because the moment you love, you care. But the care in all uh, joyfulness and bliss consciousness. How can you be joyful when you see around you people who are seriously troubled and suffering? 
Yes. And because in that uh, joyfulness, having greater ability to help them and uh, alleviate them from suffering. And that is a good friendship. If ten people are suffering and the eleventh who could enjoy, he also comes with uh, tears in life, then he only adds to the depression of the atmosphere. A man who knows how to live life in joyfulness and happiness, he radiates that harmony and love, and that is a real help to those who are suffering. So you think that all suffering is a form of wrong experience to you? Certainly it's damaging to life, to the character of life, which is bliss consciousness. Life is all bliss. You repudiate utterly, do you, the idea that we each have a cross to bear? We don't have to bear a cross and dump ourselves into suffering. Absolutely not. Only it is necessary for us to unfold that inner bliss consciousness and live it in day-to-day -day life so that we are uh, making better use of our own life and are more helpful to our surroundings.